so we are back at the same place where we left uh, for decision tree visualizing a decision tree regressor now let's implement everything on a random forest regressor so let's create this cell first of all let's create one new cell and name this cell as random forest make sure you just name it as regressor as we also have the random forest algorithm for classification techniques also so let's first implement a regressor and then once we start with the classification algorithms we will also go through a random forest and decision tree in very much deep now it's quite easy and the same thing that we have done before if you have to check out let's copy uh, check out the same code so from sklearn tree we had imported decision tree regressor we are going to do the same thing create an object of it and then fit out our model and check what we are getting the value for 20,000 for this we were getting 30,000 which we saw that is not quite accurate but let's implement a random forest regressor for this so from sklearn we are going to take it from assemble from sklearn.assemble we are going to import random forest regressor so successfully we have called it out now let's uh, create an object for this so we are going to do the same thing we are going to create an object for it named rf underscore regressor so let's call our random forest class random forest regressor and we are going to set an n estimator so by default the n estimator is 100 but now let's keep it to 100 or 10 so let's keep the n estimators to 10 and our random forest that is our random state to 0 this will make sure that whatever solution that I am getting, you are getting the same solution as a so rf regressor dot fit. We are going to pass x, we are going to pass y. So n estimator is set to 10, and we have successfully built our random forest regressor model. As you can see, that SKLN library has done a lot of things much easier for us rather than writing the full code for random forest regressor we just need to call out the particular library from sklearn that is the particular module from sklearn and everything will be done for us we just need to pass in our data fit our model and our model is ready so rf regressor is ready for implementation now what i'm going to do is i'm going to display it out for displaying it out, I'm going to use the same code as this. So we are going to take a, a X grid. So let's copy the same thing. We are going to create X grid. Then we are going to reshape into one. So let's copy the same thing again from here. The, the previous code. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a scatter plot, something similar. So again, we are going to copy it out. So let's copy both of this and paste it out over here. So the only thing that we need to change over here is we are going to pass RF regressor over here and this should be working just fine. Let's check it out. Here is our random forest visualization. So we can see that it's quite a good value we are getting and a very much brief value for each of this if you change the estimator count so let's say rf regressor is this you will it will take much more time as we are building more depth in depth uh, for this so yeah we can get something like this but for now let's keep to 20 and let's check out the value for our 22000 okay so let's take it out for 22000 so just going to change over here to rf rf dot regressor predict so we are getting 42900 so there's a difference of so 52000 minus 42 we are going to get 
a much more difference so let's check it out as well just copy out the values paste it out over here Oops. paste it out over here let's negate it and there's a difference of 9100 so that's how a simple change in algorithm a simple change in the meaning of an algorithm can provide the results to your the better results to your model so for random forest we are getting for 22,000 we are getting somewhere uh, 42,900 and for dysentery we were getting 52,000 which is much more than mm, the difference of 9,100 so and if you can see that this is quite accurate too if you just check it out so we have this data points over here then again we have over here and over here and the equivalence growth is somewhere like this state only and in this entry it was quite uh, just jumping around so we have gotten good value for this so that's it for random forest regressor i hope this is quite clear to you again sk learn library does a lot of things for us so we don't need to just write every bit of the algorithm of random forest regressor so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it in our next videos we are going to learn about some more new algorithms. Thank you very much.